Hello, internet. Uh, back working on Dodge, and you know, plans change as plans do. We're trying to figure everything out. I figure I might as well finish up cab lights. I've been putting it off for a hundred years. Actually, this video should pick up. Uh, I don't know. I might not add it in. If I do, then I'll split this and go from there. And I think I'll. I actually, I think I'll do that. So basically, there'll be old video coming up, and then we'll come back to current me. So hold on for a minute, and you will see past me. Good afternoon, internet world, people, things, stuff to tell these days. Uh, not much going on, but something I've been meaning to do for a while and just been putting off because uh, it's not super important. I'm changing the cab lights over on the Dodge. Uh, the ones that I've got, I believe they're OEM. Uh, they were on it when I bought the truck. I've had to replace or I've re o ringed the screws because the o rings seals were bad on them. Uh, and the base seal has started to leak and just going and pricing everything out I decided to just buy new units um, I went with the best you can buy I uh, went to Amazon and spent like uh, 30 bucks on a set of LED ones they just you know first thing it popped up really uh, <laughs> I don't know anything about the company we'll take a look at them and I'll see what we got Let's uh, let's let's see if I can figure out how to change the camera. All right, so you get the box. You get these wonderful screws, uh, chrome plated, so guaranteed to rust. There are some screw seals in this. You get some nice little focus. Pay attention to what I'm pointing at. Get some nice little push-in uh, plastic self-threaders, and then let's see here. You get these guys. Pretty nice looking housing. Um, probably completely illegal. They do not say DOT on them. Uh, these old ones, you can see, have a SAE number on there. They're pretty gummed up and faded. The truck's an 01, so, you know, they, they've got some life on them. You can kind of see uh, new O-ring and old screws. I did not have stainless steel screws at the time. They were in that bag. So these will get stainless steel screws. And as much as I would like to have these be DOT legal, um, I'm kind of in a state that doesn't really matter. So they don't they don't pick on you about stuff like that. So we'll see if there's any difference. I have put uh, LED bulbs in these. So like the 194 equivalency bulbs. And like always, Anytime you're doing LEDs, they actually care which one's positive and which one's negative. So make sure you put them in uh, the appropriate way. And as far as, oh yeah, yeah. Not even a manufacturer on the box. Just a part number and you know where it's made. Everything's made there. Uh, you know, most everything anyway, unfortunately. Uh, we're going to swap these out. These lenses are not cracked, so I am going to keep them. I'm probably going to keep the bases as well. Uh, I'm just weird like that. I like having stuff. I can always get new seals and, and things like that. But just in case I need it or run into an issue, I'll have them and can go backwards. So I don't think I'm doing any time lapse this time. And I have already gotten some footage in the dark of what I'm pointing in. My finger's not in the shot of what these guys look like in the dark as best I could. And so once everything's changed to the new ones, I will get footage of those. And uh, obviously, you know, right now you won't be able to tell. So we will back up, regroup once things are done and hopefully get some footage added in. Okay, so this was a shorter experiment than I had thought. Um, they they fit and they don't fit. Um, so you can see on here, these have a pigtail and I was dumb and already put that back together. I should have left it open. Underneath that, the bulb socket clips into this housing. I uh, think typical 
60s, 70s, 80s, uh, 194, 168, 194 socket where it's that uh, two wire plastic with the four points and it just kind of goes in at quarter turn locks. Um, I I'm sure you've all seen them if you've worked on any kind of classic cars. So anyway, with the extra pigtail of here and that, there's not enough room when you go to push everything down. Now, I did get the new light to physically fit. It is the same size. The holes are in the right location. But because of how that pigtail is, back here, it raises up. And it's not much. I didn't measure it. Um, but you definitely get a good, uh, a good amount of light through it. It doesn't seal. It's not going to provide a good, strong seal. Now, maybe if you gooped it up with some RTV or, you know, some silicone, uh, maybe double gasketed it, something like that. But I don't really think you should have to do that. And like I say, these were not very expensive. Uh, they were pretty much the first ones that popped up when I started searching for them. So now it's just back to the drawing board. And they do work. And they will fit stuff. I think the big problem... Can't get... Can't work camera still. Still can't. I think the big problem with these is... Uh, it's not that these are curved or anything. But just the general... You can... There's enough space in the opening where the wire passes through that you can get everything tucked in. It's all nice and neat. And just... If the pigtail was maybe... I don't know. Half as long as what's on these... You'd probably be pretty good actually if they just made it like right here if they just terminated it here you'd probably be pretty good um so now i have to go back and find some other ones not a big deal these can be used in other projects um they are you know cab marker lights are pretty universal to begin with maybe i'll go with some good ones like some growth or some truck light but we'll have to see a lot of times those are you're paying for the name more than you're paying for anything else but, all right, that was uh, that was really, really sad and useless. I don't know where I'm going to pick this up next. Uh, but I'm going to get cleaned up and go find something else to do. All right, everybody have fun. All right, we're back to current me. So, you can see all the kerfluffle that has happened with the, you know, $30, $40 Amazon special cab marker lights. And I'm trying to draw, dodge raindrops, and I'm watching people do crazy stuff down past the end of my driveway. Sorry, I'm real distracted. Uh, so let's see what I did here with these cab marker lights. So, it's the same ones. I got what I got. And I just went ahead and actually cut the wires and soldered them down so that things were uh, a more appropriate length. They just had way too much extra wire on them for the way this is set up uh, so I'm hoping I haven't field tested them yet so I'm hoping that uh, this will be good enough to get the job done and then I have a universal aluminum headache rack that we will hopefully get to in a little bit uh, and we'll talk about that when we get there but let's throw cab lights on and get that done and see what they look like and then we will uh, we will get going on the headache rack. All right, so these are all in. I think they look better. They are much less, uh, I should have left this open. They're much less sun faded. We'll see how long that lasts. You know, product quality on plastic like this is always questionable. Uh, they do all light up. I will try to get some footage while it is dark uh, of what they look like. Because I did take footage of the old ones with just LED bulbs in them. And we will compare off of that uh, to see just what we're in for. Um, let me get, let me back up and regroup on this. Okay, so this is about the best I can do. It's dark, I got all the exterior lights out. And these are the original cab lights with LED replacement bulbs in them. Um, got people down the driveway making funky noises. It's distracting. But that's what it looks like. Hopefully I'll be able to do the same thing once I replace the units with full uh, new LED versions. 
And maybe there'll be a difference. I don't know. We'll look and we'll have to find out. Well, that's what the new lights look like. It's as dark as I can get the area. Uh, worth it? Not worth it? I don't know. That's personal opinion. But I like the fact that my lenses aren't all hazed over and, uh, you know, 20 some odd, almost 25 years old right now. Oh, I think it was worthwhile. A little extra work, but not bad. Okay, so now we're back in the garage. This part two, we're doing uh, second half. I'm going to try to get this guy on. Um, I've been using the Dodge a lot more, and I've had some near misses and narrow escapes from getting the rear glass smacked out with sticks and different things I've been hauling. So I've got it roughly set up. I put it on the truck and marked it and just eyeballed it off of uh, the third brake opening. So I marked the arms, came back in, and I had a quarter inch difference. I was a quarter inch short on this side and I was a quarter inch long on that side. So I took a quarter inch out of it and I had to line it up and try to uh, try to make it fit. Yes, this is a Chinesium aluminum universal headache rack. So you have two sliding, captive sliding bolts here and two uh, on the other side, two captive sliding bolts. And then it comes with different bolts to go in there. I did notice on mine, uh, I'm gonna have to probably drill, mark it and drill for like a riv nut and I'll probably end up using a 3 8 because that's the biggest I've got um, there's just no opening here for anything to go into to be slotted uh, it's it's welded up on the inside plus I've got that goofy bed liner in there and for right now with the damage on the bed I'm not taking a bed liner out this was originally going to get used I wanted to do a bed swap. I bought an aluminum trailer actually to build, to use as a custom bed on it. And it just looks like that project's going nowhere. And I can use the trailer more as a trailer and I can use the truck more as a truck. So don't like having spare parts just sitting around. I'm gonna mount this up and see what kind of trouble we can get into. All right, and there's a test fit. I don't think it's too horrible. Yes, it's a bit narrower. Uh, look, this is, you know, sometimes you make do the best you can with what you got. Because I was going with an all-aluminum trailer, uh, it, and I just wanted to stay with that theme, this was about the most affordable all-aluminum headache rack I could find. Uh, it was about two, just shy of $200, I think, on eBay. Uh, and that's just the rough markup. I've got to get it. I have not tightened anything down yet. Uh, the bolts are still loose back here, uh, but I have it pretty well. That's a little, it's a little rearward, but it, I'm, it's pretty well lined up with the rear of the bed here. So the corners here are right. We had a 500 pound bag of stone slide into it at one point, and uh, yeah, a spur of the moment purchase, and and it did what it did. You can kind of see the. The headboard there is a little wonkety. It bows in towards the cab quite a bit, and I believe it actually dented the back cab wall just a just a smidge. But the way these thing this thing's set up, so oh, where's the finger? This slotted channel here is actually supposed to line up, or the manufacturer at least says that it should line up with the bed pocket. I don't. I've got this. Uh, I don't feel like taking out this goofy plastic liner. What I'm probably going to do is mark out. I think I'm going to put two, two in here. One near the back, one near the front, or, or I guess one near the front and one near the back. And uh, they're going to be three eighths, uh, probably well three eighths coarse thread, uh, grade eight hardware what's going to go in there and what i'll do is i'll mark out on the plastic i'll move all this out of the way i will drill and over drill the plastic 
so that I can get into uh, the actual sheet metal at the bedside. And I'll drop two rib nuts in there. I'll put two on each side. It comes with, I can't hardly see over there, but uh, let's walk around. It does come with some pretty decent uh, metric 8.8 .8 zinc coated hardware with big, uh, I don't know if you can see it in there, but big flange plates. And I like it. They're, uh, they're going to be plenty strong enough for what this is, this is going to need. Uh, so that's just what we're going to stick with. So we'll do that, we'll mark out, we'll drill up our plastic, uh, get the, get the bolts tightened up back here. And hopefully we can see some finished products soon. All right. So one side's down. This is what we got. Two three-eighths rib nuts, and then this guy will fit in, and it grabs around the, the edges of the uh, of the bed pocket there. Um, you know, when you're doing stuff like this, uh, for the love of all things good, holy, and just in the world, if you give two craps about anything you're doing, actually, like put some paint or something after you drill through the metal. Don't be like me, because I don't care. Uh, but go, you know, do that because that's good. Uh, but let's say these two plus that guy actually keep that thing from falling over in the wind. Uh, went ahead and tighten those bolts down. That's the rivnut tool I got. It works great. It's fine. Three eighths is definitely pushing its capacity, or it's pushing my strength grip. One of the two. Yes. If nobody's noticed, we have a Roxy sticker. This is my wife's truck, technically. When she was driving it on a daily basis, I thought it was cute to put the Rocky Sea sticker on the back of it because she had no clue. And, uh, yeah. So anyway, back to this. So I've got my holes marked out where I want them to be. Uh, transfer punch works really well with that. I took a, the 3 8 washer I was going to use. I lined it up in this slot where I wanted it to be. And I set a 3 8 transfer punch down. And that gave me my, my rough mark to start from. So, uh, yep, quit yapping. I'll put this together when we come back. Hopefully this thing will be bolted on and down. Well, that ended poorly. Uh, can you see what I did there? Yeah, that's a bit big. Sometimes when you're using these Christmas tree bits, uh, you're not careful. Accidents happen. So remember kids, always use protection or at the very least, mark off where you need to stop drilling your damn hole. All right, back to business. And we're complete with only the one minor screw up and I'm not gonna sweat the load on that one too much. Uh, I'll get something. I think I'll go to the hardware store. I looked around, I thought about breaking out the uh, welder and putting in a weld nut and, and calling it good. But I think what I'm gonna do is go to the hardware store and see if they've got a, just a uh, one of those spring loaded wing nuts and just drop that down. It's It's plenty. good i'm shaking a whole truck so uh it's good it's done like i say this was inexpensive i want to say ebay uh, i do need to get a cap for that side top tube it did come with it but it was broken during shipping that uh, was the only damage that i had and the grade eight well the 8.8 .8 metric hardware that it comes with i believe it's 12 millimeter uh thread uh 12 millimeter one and a half probably uh it does appear to be pretty good hardware and the flange nuts the captive nut pieces that it has are like 3 16th plate 3 16th inch thick plate so uh i was pretty happy with it overall for like say for what i was spinning and you know the reason i went with aluminum instead of some of the steel ones even at price point that i was looking at uh, was weight savings more than anything else with the uh, bed swap on this is 80 8600 I believe uh, gross vehicle with a 10k tow rating and uh, it's either 86 or 88 but it's right around 8600 pounds 10k tow rate uh, keeping the payload down so keeping the actual empty curb weight plus me sitting in it down uh, benefits what I can do you know I know it doesn't seem like much but 
If you can save 100 or 200 pounds here, that's that's always better. Uh, flip the camera around. Whew. There we go. See my ugly face. But I got my helper out. We're done with this one. Uh, during the interlude, we had some Volvo parts show up so I can get back on prepping the Volvo for a power tour, which I know isn't impressive with me. I'm doing the one day, but I'm still excited, which is good because it's been a couple weeks since, uh, since I bought the ticket. So that's nice. Um, run into a few, few snags with that one, but we get into those in those videos and not this. And I'm kind of disappointed that I'm not doing the bed swap on this, but things are what they are. And before anybody starts complaining about me, you know, I'm, I made the offhand joke that you guys should always prep the holes and stuff when you're cutting into the metal, and, and you should, you should prep the holes. This bed is pretty bad. I was always under the impression that from looking at it from underneath, uh, the steel looked in really reasonable shape. Yeah, I'm from mid-Atlantic right next to the ocean, so there's salt water, there's salt in the air. It's just salt everywhere. And uh, this thing's got that plastic bed liner in it, and I was always just afraid to take the bed liner out because you know, I mean, you just knew what was going to be. I didn't want to... I didn't want to see what what I knew, but from the underside, it always looked really good. Well, when I pulled the bed liner out last year, uh, you know, it's it's crap. There's tons of holes in it, and I'm not. I'm gonna come up with something. Either I'm gonna go back to my original plan, and since engine, transmission, transfer case, front and rear axles are all rebuilt in this truck, and the frame solid. I might go do a body swap, just run the chassis and find me a nice classic one ton, uh, three quarter or one ton truck, swap it on there and go. I'd really like to find an M715, uh, if anybody's got one that's of a reasonable value for basically a cab and a bed. I don't really care about the frame and stuff on it, um, and you're near, you know, reasonably near Southern Ohio, let me know. But other than that, I think we're going back to it. Get working on the Volvo a little bit probably and finish up with other projects. So everybody get out, have fun, do something you like.